All right, so welcome to the gentle class for today. And as you get yourselves settled, just take a few breaths and land in your space. And today we are going to be focusing on the breath. And we last week looked at the breath as well and continuing on and sort of adding on to our themes as we go each week. So last week we were looking at the inhalation and the inhalation is the phase of the breath where we expand, right? So we talked about how that expansive feeling helps us to kind of let go of some of the, the stuff that's the, the stuckness in our bodies and allow us to feel more ease. And in that ease, there's a sense of more vitality when we have more energy that freed up by not holding ourselves so tight. So today we're going to focus more on the exhalation and the effect that the exhalation has on the nervous system is that it tends to have a calming effect when we exhale and really just let the breath go. There's the sense that we can let go of the tension in our bodies, we can sink into whatever we're sitting or lying down on. And there's a, an energetic release so letting go in that exhale. And so we'll be focusing on that. And then the other thing that goes along with that is the inhalation is focused in this area of the body, right? We can feel breath. We talked about last week, maybe feeling breath all over the body, but the lungs are actually up in the upper chest area. So that is where we're literally breathing into. As the lungs expand, they press down on the diaphragm and the lower organs will may move in and out as you breathe. So what we're looking at here on the inhalation is creating a feeling of expansion front, back and sides of the body, just as we did last week. And then on the exhalation, we're thinking about sort of squeezing the breath gently out from the bottom. So the belly might expand a little bit when we inhale, when we exhale, we're going to draw in from the front, the sides and the back. So this idea of and you may not really feel yourself drawing in, but just energetically th this idea of drawing in and up as you exhale. So the inhale goes down and out and the exhale comes in and up, just like that. So inhale down and out and don't get too bogged down on where you feel the breath. I'll remind you at times, but really where you feel the breath in your body is, is perfect, right? There's no right or wrong way to breathe. You've made it this far, so. Um, but we can bring different focuses to the breath for, for mindfulness and for different effects on the nervous system. So one last piece I wanna say about the breath that we're going to look at today, and we'll start with this, and we're going to be starting seated, so you can get yourselves comfortable as you're listening. And um, we're going to do a breath technique, it's a humming breath, and so it's a very quiet, or it could be sort of medium or even louder hum, in the throat as you exhale. So you're inhaling through your, through your nose, you're exhaling and just making a quiet humming sound. And the effect that this has is it, it tones the vagus nerve, which is a nerve that runs from the brain through the body, uh, but it is very intimately connected with the nervous system. And when we tone the vagus nerve, or V-E-G-U-S, not Vegas, the, the place. <laughs> uh, it comes from the root vagabond, so it's traveling around the body. So it goes to different places in the body and sends information back to the brain actually about how we're doing. And so when we do this humming breath, it has this calming effect on the nervous system. Now I say that, and it's also possible that some technique that's supposed to be calming isn't calming for you. So if you don't find that it's feels good to you, you can always just let it go and just breathe normally. So finding a comfortable seat and we'll start with that breath in a moment. <laughs> So make sure that you're comfortable and that your spine can be long. Up you go, up you go. It doesn't matter if you're on a chair or the floor, it doesn't matter if you're cross-legged or your legs are stretched out in front of you, but you wanna make sure that you feel some freedom in your spine, that you're not kind of hunched over and rounded in your back, that you've got space in the front of your body. So your body and my, my dog is behaving and going to her own mat for a change, so it's lovely. So take a moment, just letting your own surroundings settle, your own body settle in this 
position. And then, so again, we're inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose and making a soft humming sound. It could be louder if it feels good for you to make it louder, but it only needs to be very soft. And if that doesn't feel right for you, just normal breathing, just paying attention to the movement of your breath and what you feel with it. So when you're ready. Continue at your own pace, several more breaths. And then gradually letting that sound go and just coming back to the breath for a moment. No need to manipulate the breath, just breathing. And then I'm going to introduce a little bit of movement that helps us to focus on those areas I was talking about earlier. So the chest and upper back under the rib cage, sides of the armpits area, that whole area we're going to focus on expansion on the inhale. You can relax the belly and it can do whatever it wants. It, it can expand as well. There's no need to control. We're just focusing and noticing how the breath fills that space on the inhale. And then on the exhale, like we're squeezing up gently from the bottom. So there's this feeling of gently drawing in as we exhale and the breath comes up and out. So inhale, you're going to arch the back, take the arms a little wider. Think about the rib cage lifting and expanding. And then as you exhale, drawing the spine a little rounder, bringing the belly and the sides in. Just a little squeeze and then inhale. Arms can open a little. Exhale, you can even squeeze the arms into the sides but make it really subtle. Like it's not a, a strong, strong, intense movement, but more of an energetic feeling of drawing in towards your core and then expanding into the space around you. Moving with your breath, as long as that feels comfortable for you, if you need extra breaths to make sure you're not straining, please take extra breaths anytime. Maybe notice what feels more comfortable for you. Is it more comfortable to expand with the inhale or does it feel more comfortable to contract in with the exhale? So as always, there's no right or wrong, a process of tuning in and discovering. Make sure you relax your belly when you inhale. Let the breath expand there if it wants to and then draw in as you exhale. And one more breath. You can make the movements bigger or smaller. It doesn't matter. Whatever feels good in your body. Great. When you 
are complete with your last breath, with the movement, come back to a neutral spine. So sitting up tall, but not rigid. Right? So your, your spine has natural curves. It's not sitting up straight. It's not a straight spine, but a relaxed and long spine. And then you have some options here. If it's comfortable, you can bring your hands onto your shoulders and even lift the elbows a little bit, or the hands can come onto the hips or they can even stay on the legs. So again, it doesn't matter where your legs are as long as they're comfortable. You wanna feel your weight on your sit bones, even and comfortable on your spine, long and relaxed. So wherever your hands are out of the way, really, you're going to inhale and lengthen. And then exhale, turn in one direction, just until you feel that that's a comfortable position and then come back to the center, inhale. And again, gentle squeeze in with the abdominal muscles as you exhale, inhale, relax, and let the chest expand and lift. So exhale, drawing in and up, inhale, expanding. So it's not a big movement. You're using your core. You're not trying to twist as far as you can, but just to feel those muscles start to wake up. We relax the abdominal muscles and then we engage them to twist. We relax as we inhale and engage to twist. Wonderful, let's come back to the center. Do a little bit of movement for the wrists. Actually, before we do that, let's go back to the forward and back movement a few times just to balance after the twist. So inhaling, you can open the arms, the heart, expanding in all directions. Exhale, drawing in towards the core in your abdominal area. Inhale, expanding all through the torso, focusing on the rib cage. And if all of that just sounds like too much to think about with your breath, my goodness, just do the movement. Right? It can really seem like a lot. And if you're used to the movement and the breath together, it might come very, very naturally. So whatever works for you really, really is okay. Great, and then coming back to a neutral spine and now we'll do some movements for the wrists. One way and the other. Great. Interlace your fingers and let your hands move and your arms move in a kind of wave-like pattern. Any really movement that occurs to you, that happens, it doesn't have to be coordinated or graceful. Great. And then bringing the hands together and a little movement all directions. Great, you can press your palms away if you like. And then gently give them a little shake. All right, we're going to come onto our backs now. So you can, if you're on a chair, you can just come right down to the floor. And if you're on the floor, you're sort of halfway there. And you come right down. And bring one hand to your rib cage somewhere, one hand to your abdominal area somewhere. And now just let the breath be completely free. So let go of trying to imagine or feel the breath in any particular way or direct the breath in any particular way and just feel the breath as it is. So one hand, the other hand might move, no hands or both hands might move, one might move first, one second, one might go in as the other goes up. So just really be curious. When you let your breath be, what happens? So 
Keep bringing your attention to the breath for a few more breaths. And then let's bring the arms down alongside the body. So knees are still bent, feet on the floor, arms alongside the body. And then with your inhalation, take the arms up overhead. You can bend them or whatever position is most comfortable for you. They can come straight overhead or more to the sides. So lifting overhead. And then as you bring them back down, exhaling and to the sides. So remember, you can always just move and breathe freely or you can coordinate with the breath. So if you're coordinating, arms go up as you breathe in, arms come down as you exhale. And then we're going to add one more piece in. As the arms come down, bring one knee in toward your chest, exhaling. And then as you inhale, arms lift up, leg comes down. And then exhaling, other knee comes in toward your chest. So continue like that. It really doesn't matter where your arms go in between. If overhead isn't comfortable to the sides is fine. Or you can even just let your arms come to the ground and move only your legs. So really the legs are the part that's most important here. So each exhale, one knee comes in, it comes to the ground as you inhale. So do this a few more times and then start to really pay attention to what happens to the spine, what happens to the pelvis. When your leg comes towards your body, does it come right in close to your body or does it feel kind of stuck somewhere? Does it get stuck because of your because of your belly or your thigh being in the way? Or does it feel like it gets stuck because the bones meet each other in your hip and thigh? So let's bring one knee in and explore that a little bit. So you can hold one knee in and notice how much space is there between your body and your leg. Maybe the leg doesn't come all the way into the body. Maybe it feels stiffer and doesn't want to come all the way in, totally fine, notice that. Maybe it comes part way in and then maybe you run into your belly a little bit and it gets a little bit uncomfortable. You can move the leg a bit to the side if you like and see how that feels. Maybe for you, you have lots of space and your knee comes right up toward your shoulder. Again, it's no right or wrong here. We're just kind of tuning in and noticing. And then try the other side, get curious. How does the other side feel? What do you notice? Is there any discomfort? Do you feel a stretch in your hip? Do you feel a pinching in your, on the inside of your hip? Does it wanna come straight in? Does it wanna to come to the side? Do you have enough space? So get curious and notice. Okay, right, then we're gonna come back and get curious in another way on the first side. So bringing the knee in as, as close as is comfortable. And this time we're going to hold the hand behind the leg. So your knee is in as close as it can. And then you're going to slowly start to straighten your leg until you feel that the knee would have to move away to straighten it more, okay? So that might be an inch, it might be six inches, it might be your foot pointing at the ceiling, it doesn't matter. Keep your thigh and close to your body and explore this movement. And it might be challenging to move the leg in this way. So it might only move a little, see how it feels. And then if you're really curious and you wanna get more sort of information, you can try straightening the other leg and then seeing, does that change anything? Is it harder to bring this knee in close? Is it harder to straighten the leg? Is it easier? Do I feel something different? And then when you've explored that side, you can bring that foot to the floor. We'll bring the other knee in. So second side of the second round. Again, you can bring the knee in close, hold on behind the thigh and explore moving the lower leg now without 
changing the distance from your knee to your chest, what is it like to move your lower leg? You can explore where does it feel like, well, that's enough, or is it just doesn't go any further? What do you notice? What do you feel? And are you breathing? <laughs> so tune in there as well. Great. And again, if you're really curious and you want to explore a bit more, you can straighten the leg that's on the ground. See how that affects the leg that's into the chest. Does it need to move away a little bit or can it stay tucked in close? What happens when you start to move the lower leg? Does anything change? And then let's bring that foot to the floor and you can go ahead and stretch both legs out and maybe wave the feet in and out a few times, letting the hip flexors release. So these big muscles in the front of the hips and a little bit in the abdominals working to bring the knee in as well as of course our hands holding. And you can shake the legs and we'll shake against the ground. Right, and then come back, feet to the floor and knees bent. And let's bring the hands onto the belly now. We'll, we'll explore the breath and a little bit of movement here again. So inhaling, relax your body, let the breath just go wherever it goes. And then exhale, press into your feet a little bit and bring your lower back toward the ground, this gentle feeling of drawing in. And then inhale, relax. If you feel discomfort in your lower back, either make the movement really subtle or just be here and breathe and feel how your breath actually does that movement very, very subtly on its own. When you're relaxed, when you tune in, there's a natural expansion, a little back bend on your inhale and a natural dropping back of your lower back and a softening drawing in on your exhale. So you can either tilt the pelvis, exhale, press into your feet, inhale, relax, maybe arch the back a little more, or just be here and breathe if that's a better option for you. Right. And then let that go. Just completely let it go. Breathe normally now. And we're going to make a shift in our position. We're going to come up to all fours. You can roll over onto your side first. Use one hand to support you to come upright. And then you can just keep swinging your legs around to come onto your hands and knees. Now, anytime we're doing work on hands and knees, I really encourage and invite you to take breaks as much as you need to. So if your wrists or anything else, your knees, shoulders are not happy, just take a break. You can come to child's pose anytime. Um, you can also put padding under your knees and elevate the heel of your hand a bit, maybe rolling up your mat to give it a bit more cushioning if you need it. So we're gonna come back to the idea of the breath here, focusing on the exhale mostly, but we're also going to be inhaling, of course. So as you inhale, let the spine drop, let the chest come forward. Feel the expansiveness of the inhale. And then as you exhale, think about drawing in towards your core with your belly, rounding your back, letting your head come down. Again, inhale and reverse the curve of your spine. Exhale, use your belly as if this drawing up of the belly is drawing you into this bit of a back or forward bend really. So back bending as you inhale, arching. Your belly draws up. It's like you're trying to make a bridge with your back rounding, press into the palms, widen your shoulder blades, and then relax, bend the elbows a little, come forward. So take your time. You're probably moving at a different pace than I am. So find your own rhythm here. And you can always just do the movement, let go of the breath if it feels uncomfortable in any way. Not let go entirely of the breath, let go of coordinating the breath. All right, now we're going to start to shift back towards child's pose. If you have issues with your knees, you might 
not want to go back quite as far or you can place a folded blanket between your your thighs and your calves so that it limits the movement on your knees we're going to start to move back and then we're going to again see how this angle works can you bring your body right down onto your thighs your head can be on your hands or on the mat or do you need to stay a little more upright? Maybe you need to take the legs wider to accommodate your belly or your chest in there. So play around with what you need to do to make child's pose comfortable for you. And if you absolutely can't make child's pose comfortable for you, you might just go back to the movement we were doing a moment ago. All right, so when you find your way to that position that you can be comfortable in for a few breaths, you can relax there. And just tune into the feeling of your breath in this position. Where does your breath go? Do you even feel your breath here? Maybe you don't. Maybe you say, well, I know I'm breathing because I can hear myself breathing, but I don't really feel much. So that's totally legitimate as well. Right. So when you're ready, we're going to come back up to all fours and we'll keep working with this, this kind of contracted exhale movement. So it's the drawing in around the core as you exhale. And we'll do this again with some movement. So taking one leg, you can stretch it back behind you, maybe add a little arch in the back if that feels right. So you're breathing in in this position. As you exhale, you wanna think about rounding your back as we were before, and then how close can that knee come now when we have to use our strength to pull it up rather than gravity putting our body down or pulling the leg down. So you can explore that a little bit now, inhaling open, exhaling, knee coming towards your nose. And how does that work? Is it easy? Is it hard? Does the leg come as close? You can hold for a couple of breaths, press into your arms, lift up through your upper back, breathe and release. So let's take a moment in your comfortable version of child's pose, whatever that is, it could be up higher, if your knees don't want to go back or your ankles don't like it, take a moment, find that comfortable position, breathe for a moment, just come back to feeling your breath, come back to just being for a moment. Hmm. Let go of any tension in your body when you take this moment of rest. should say let go of any tension that you're able to let go of because some tension is just it's really chronic and it takes a long time to undo so if it feels hard to let go of tension honor that Over here. and then when you're ready we're going to do the other side so you can come back up to all fours you want to line your hands up under your shoulders again, knees under the hips, do what you need to for extra padding if, if it's required. And then lifting the other leg, breathing in, exhale. So we're rounding, we're pressing into the arms, we're bringing the knee in, not so that you're straining, but really noticing how does this feel? What's challenging about this? Is it different from when I was lying down, bringing one knee in? So you're exhaling. That exhale is really gonna help give you space, right? It gets your belly out of the way, or at least in, in part. Right, if you like, if it feels okay for you, you can stay for a few breaths in that position, pressing into the arms. Yeah, and then release. And again, take the weight off your wrists, come back. You can do some wrist circles, find whatever comfortable position you can be in in child's pose for a couple of breaths and pause there just to, to relax and reset for a moment. Great. 
Great. So when you're ready, we're going to and quite appropriately come back to all fours and then work maybe with the pose called downward dog. So um, I've got my, my canine assistant here who's actually not that helpful. Go on, honey. Go, 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 go. <laughs> um, so downward dog, the, the weight is on the hands and the feet. The higher the hands are in this pose, the easier it is on your arms and shoulders. And the more the knees are bent, the easier the pose actually is on your upper body as well and your legs. So if you have blocks, you can use them. You can also, if you don't want to put this much weight on your, on your arms, you can also do this with a chair. And I'll actually get a chair to demonstrate for you. So you just have the chair in front. And instead of bringing your hands to your blocks, you bring your hands to the chair, you bring your feet under you, come into this, it's sort of a half downward, half upward kind of a dog. Otherwise downward dog, the hands and feet are on the ground or on blocks, and you're making a triangle with your body or an inverted V. So you want to if you're going to do this pose with the hands on the ground or on blocks, really take your time to come down as you need to and, sorry about that, as you need to and take breaks for your wrists. So coming back to all fours, hands on blocks, on the ground or on a chair, taking a breath in and finding a little length. And then tuck your toes under as you round your back. Imagine your belly button moving back and lifting you up. Keep your knees bent, press into your hands, let your head come down. And then let's come right back down to all fours. Take a breath in, good, and come to whatever version of child's pose you like. We'll come back up to all fours. So we'll ease into it. Exhale, think about the back of your waist lifting from the exhale energy. Coming back into downward dog, knees are bent. Good, coming back to all fours and moving to child's pose. You can take a break here if you like, do some movement for your wrists. It's really tuning that you're not overdoing it, right? We all have different needs, so really tuning into what your needs are. And then you can come to a seated position if you like, sitting on your heels or maybe just um, however you can watch for a moment if you, if you like. So one of the things that comes up a lot is in the sun salutation, which is a series of poses we haven't done in this session yet, but there's this difficult move of stepping your foot forward between your hands from downward dog. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it is difficult and it has to do with a few different things. So proportions, how long are your arms compared to your torso and your legs, right? So for some people, they can sit as I am on my heels and touch the ground with their hands. I'm several inches above the ground, right? So if you've got a belly that's in your way and you can't bring your knee up close to your chest and you already know if that's true or not because we've explored that with our movements, right? If your hips are tight in some way and the knee doesn't want to come up to the chest, it's going to be difficult or impossible to make this move without some extra help, right? So having blocks um, or having a chair to help you with this. So I'm going to demonstrate with blocks because for most people that is going to be a necessity to make this happen quite frankly. <laughs> so from here, you can watch. Lifting into downward dog, I'm going to keep my knees bent and I'm going to actually swing one leg up and bring it through just like we did when we were on all fours. If you want to try this with me while I'm talking, you're welcome to. If you want to just watch, that's fine too. And then when I'm ready to swing through, I want to make sure this is the end of my inhale up here. Exhale, I'm bringing it through and oh my goodness. I get stuck halfway, right? That's what happens with most of us. And your swing up might just be an inch, but usually what happens is here because we kind of drop, right? So what we got to do is push up and lift off the back leg. So if 
I try that again, I start with a bent knee, I stretch back, I'm gonna round my back, I'm trying to do it in slow motion, bring my knee as close as I can, and push off my back foot to swing that leg through. <laughs> a lot of pieces have to line up to make that happen, right? This is not automatic. This is a challenging move. And if you notice, I have blocks. I have relatively long arms and a lot of flexibility, but for me, blocks is easier. I can do it without. And if you can do it with blocks or without blocks is, is really not important. The important thing is that you have a way of getting where you need to go, right? So what happens when we inevitably get stuck here, okay? We can lower the back knee. We can even use a hand to help bring the leg forward, however it takes, right? We can, instead of stepping forward from downward dog, we can lower both knees. And then from there, try stepping one foot forward. Maybe we need to have a chair, right? Up on the side or something to hold on to. We can come forward like this. All right, so I, I'm not sure where you're at because I can't see you all, but I invite you to play around with that a little bit. So I'll talk you through and don't worry about not getting there. Right? Just find out, be curious and explore where are my limitations and what do I need to do to work around them? So if you're okay in downward dog, you're lifting up, you're keeping your knees bent and try lifting one leg a bit, take a breath in, exhale. And as you do, push off the back leg and see how much you can lift this knee into your chest in order to get it forward. So if you stop here, great, try it again. Maybe it goes an inch more the next time. And try it again. So play around, take a break when you need to, come down, rest in child's pose or sit back and circle the wrists. It's a little bit challenging. This was very challenging, who am I kidding? So take your time and Try to be kind to yourself if you're, if you're challenged by it. It's challenging. Great. So I'll give you another minute to play and explore. If you've had enough playing and exploring, you might come back to child's pose and hang out there, relax for a moment. So again, there's no rush when you come down, really give yourself some time to relax the wrists, come back to the breath. And then whenever you feel ready, we're going to come right around onto our backs again. So getting the weight off your knees as well. And just coming back to a nice relaxed position on your back and just find your way there. Let go of the effort or frustration or glee or celebration or whatever it was that came up for you as you worked on that challenging piece. And know that there are so many factors involved and Many of them are out of our control, like our proportions, right? How long our arms are, how long our torso is, how long our legs are, all of that. And then finding your way back to your breath. Coming into an awareness of your exhalation now completely relaxed and this feeling that comes often with the exhalation that we just let go, we release. Okay, 
Hands can be wherever they're comfortable. Letting go of the effort, coming back to stillness. We're still going to do a little bit more movement, but just letting go of the effort of the downward dog, just stepping forward. Great. So next, we've been working today quite a bit to bring some awareness to the front of the hips and to the abdominal area by bringing knees in, noticing the hip flexor area, the front of the hip, the ab abdominal area. Right? So we've been contracting that area, fair amount. And so now I invite you to open this area a little bit with bridge pose. You can let your hands come to the sides and relax on the ground. Feet line up underneath your hips, sorry, underneath your knees, a few inches away from your sit bones. So here, as you exhale, start by pressing into your feet. You'll feel the lower back kind of lengthen, the tailbone starts to lift. And then as you inhale, as you lift your hips up, think about your knees moving away from your shoulders. So growing that line on the front of your body. And then as you exhale, soften, let the spine release down. And the knees start to travel back over the heels. So as we lift, think about the knees moving away from the shoulders, growing along in that top line of your body, and then softening back down as you exhale. You can do this at your own pace, either with or without coordinating the breath, lifting and lowering. Feel free to do a few more dynamically like that. If you like, you can stay. And if you have those blocks handy for your stepping forward from downward dog, you could even place one on its side or flat underneath the back of your hips to rest on. And that way you can relax and let the front of the body open without having to hold yourself there. But if you don't have anything available, then staying and lowering down when you need to. You can, if you don't have a block, a, a cushion or a blanket will actually do nicely for that as well. So it can be a meditation cushion that you bring under your hips or a rolled or folded blanket. When you're ready, you can come on down. And when you reach the ground, hugging the knees in, maybe side to side rocking movement to massage the muscles that support your spine. <coughs> Excuse me. And then when you're ready, bring your feet back to the floor, arms a little bit away from the body to the sides. And now we're going to do the spinal twist. And I think we did this last week as well. Only moving when you exhale. So we're really going to emphasize the exhalation today. And you're exhaling when the legs are going to one side. You're going to inhale there, exhale back to center, and repeat on the other side. So you can start in the middle with an inhale. Exhale, knees go one way. If you like, the head can go the other way. Stay there and breathe in. And then exhale, come back to center. Feel your lower back move to the ground as you engage your core a little bit at the end of the exhale. And then inhale here. And then you're going to exhale, go the other direction. You'll stay there while you inhale. And then again, as you exhale, you're using your core to bring the knees back, drawing in belly towards the spine, spine toward the ground. Inhale here, relax. 
Exhale, move to the side. Inhale there, the side. Exhale, use your core to help you bring the legs back to center. Stay there and inhale and then carry on for a few more at your own pace. If you prefer to do it a different way, then also always feel free to move in the way that your body would feel best with. If you're still enjoying the twist and want to continue a few more rounds, go for that. And if you feel complete with the twist and you're ready to come back to a more balanced and uh, aligned spine, you can come back to the center. Maybe lift the hips up and draw the spine to the ground. And then bring your knees toward your chest and let one hand rest on each knee. So we'll start with arms straight, knees away. You can take a breath in and there should be some space there for your breath. And then as you exhale, feel your belly drop back and the knees move towards you, drawing in any amount that feels comfortable. Pull just a little bit with your hands. And then as you start to inhale, let the breath start to push your legs away. Follow with your arms. And again, your breath is probably a different pace than mine, so follow your own breath pace. You can really focus on the exhale here and that drawing in of the knees, the rounding of the back, the lengthening of the spine, the tilting of the pelvis, it was all this stuff happening in your body just with this simple movement. It's also considered an abdominal massage as the legs come in toward the body, squishing the abdominal organs. And you can play around with that a little bit by holding the knees close and going side to side or circling the knees around. So each time they come in towards the belly, giving a little massage across the lower abdomen. Right. When you feel complete with that, you can bring your feet to the ground and then try stretching your legs straight out on the ground. So now we're opening up the front of the hips, the hip flexors. You can point your toes towards the ceiling and press your heels down towards the ground. Bring your hands down to either side of your body. Engage your arms and shoulders, press down. Feel your heart lift a little bit. Press down into your heels. Feel your body engage. Take a breath in. And now as you exhale, ah, let the body release and melt. Take a few breaths with the body completely relaxed. And then we'll do that same action again. So heels down, toes up, start with the arms, press down into the arms, feel the heart lift a little as the shoulders press down. Press down into the heels, feel your legs engage, almost like you're going to push your hips off the ground, but don't. You don't want to go that far. We're just pausing here. You can breathe in, squeeze and press down. You can squeeze your buttocks to lift a little. And then exhale. Let everything relax. Take a couple of more breaths here and we're going to do that one more time. So we can actually teach our body how to relax by consciously tensing and then relaxing. So we'll do that once more. Heels down, toes up, palms down, pressing down into the arms. Find a little lift in the heart. Squeezing through the arms and you can squeeze down through the body, squeezing down through the legs, pressing the heels down, squeezing the buttocks. Even squeeze your face, squeeze, squeeze, press with your fingers. 
And breathing in and exhale to release. So if there's anything you need as we start to wind down now, we're going to head into Shavasana. So if you need to put some more clothing on to be warm enough, or if you want to cover with a blanket, or maybe you want to squeeze your knees in again or do some other movement that might feel good. So give you a couple of minutes to just get yourselves organized, get comfortable. If you want to sit, that is an other, another great option. You can always sit for this part. Lying down seems to be the, the usual choice for most, but sitting is a, a great choice as well if you want to stay alert. The main thing is that you're comfortable. So if you, you know, if you have this idea that you want to sit to be more alert, but you're so fidgety and uncomfortable, you're better off to stay lying down and be comfortable and allow your body to relax. As you get settled, and you might still be getting settled, which is fine, but as you get settled, if you like, even lying down, you can do this quiet humming breath to relax the nervous system. So we were just active, we were engaged, the, um, you know, the brain and the body all working. And, and so to really settle again, you can try that humming breath if you like. So inhaling through the nose, exhaling, making a humming sound in the throat. So continue either making that soft humming sound or just breathing normally. If you're humming and it interferes with listening, you can let go of the humming. But if you enjoy the humming and it's quiet enough that you can still hear me, you can do a few more breaths humming if you like. So either way, let your awareness come to your head and face. Notice any sensations that are present in your head, your face. And as you exhale, let the weight of your head sink down into the ground if you're lying down, or let the weight of your head rest over your shoulders and spine if you're sitting. Let your jaw release. And bring your awareness to your throat. So if you were doing the humming breath, you were actually vibrating your vocal cords and you might feel something, some resonance or some residue in your throat. So notice that. And even if you weren't doing the humming, notice what's present in your throat. The air and the breath are still moving through this area. Letting that go, tune into your shoulders. As you exhale, see if there's any more release or softening that can come into your shoulders. Let your arms follow. Could your arms and hands soften and relax a little bit more? Notice any sensations that are present and let your arms go.
As you exhale, feel your head, neck, shoulders, arms, hands release even more. Relax around your rib cage and just let the breath flow with as much ease and effortlessness as possible. Let the belly soften and relax, the rib cage soften and drop back. And feel your pelvis start to drop. Let go of any holding around the hips, the abdomen, the lower back. Soften and drop down through your thighs. And especially where the thighs meet the pelvis in the front of the body where we are working today, relaxing this area in the front of the hips. And again, softening the lower belly, softening the thighs, dropping down through the knees, the calves, the ankles, Relaxing your feet all the way to the tips of your toes. With each exhalation, ask yourself, could I let go a little more? Could I soften? Is there something I'm holding onto in my body that I could release as I exhale? So either continuing to scan your body and drop down with each exhale or just simply following and noticing the breath. And listening to the chant that brings mindfulness to the body and breath. And when we become more mindful and more in tune with our bodies and our breath. We allow our inner light to shine more brightly. Our inner light is always present, it's always shining, but it gets weighed down and covered over by stress and tension. So our true vitality is really in uncovering that inner light, letting go of the things that hold us back from being our most vibrant, shining selves. Om Annamaya Me Shudhyantam Jyotiraham Viraja Vipapma Bhuya Sakasvaha Om Pranamaya Me Jyotiraham Viraja Vipapma Bhuya Sakasvaha Your mind has wandered, come back to your breath. Feel that sense of dropping down and letting go with each exhale. And if you're also ready to bring in a little energy, you can bring some focus now to the expansion of your inhale. 
Expanding the breath into the body a little deeper than you might naturally, and then exhale a little more fully than you might naturally, using your abdominal muscles to gently squeeze the breath out. Inhale, make sure you soften. So you don't want to hold tension in the belly always. You want to soften, contract, soften, soften, contract. So finding that a little deeper breath now and then adding movement again, if you're ready to move. If you prefer to stay longer in Shavasana, then you have that option. If you're ready to move, start to move your body in any way that would feel good. Eventually rolling onto your side to make your way slowly back to a seated position. And wherever you are, whether you've come back to sit or you're still lying, take a moment to thank yourself for making this space in your day to show up for yourself, to show up for your breath, your body, your being. And bring your hands together at your heart if that feels right for you. Namaste.